Hello, my name is Anand Bean, and today I would like to show you a little bit, or show you, um, to um, um, talk a little bit about uh, RESTful Web Services and um, wh why I got the idea about RESTful Web Services, uh, JAXRS, for this conference. Well, um, I, um, I, I, I saw a lot of um, projects and applications this year, and for unknown reasons, um, everywhere I saw in, as, as a text the term RESTful or REST, but it wasn't restful at all. So what I would like to do is to um, to write a little bit uh, to write a little bit code, and I prepare also some projects and show you some uh, some new JaxRS 2.0 features. But I would also like to talk in general about um, JaxRS. I will use uh, the Twitter handle. Um, you can use the Twitter handle jeconf, airhex, or Adam Bean if you like to ask questions uh, live. So it worked pretty well in the past. So you can. Just do it. So I have opened my Twitter here, and um, uh, um, so you can you can just ask me questions about whatever you like, not whatever you like about RESTful web services. So um, on that note, we can start with the slides. So um, the first slide is of course the title of the um, of uh, of the talk. Um, I'm a freelancer, and I really enjoy it. Um, working with Java and programming the Java programming language. And um, I, I have to say, um, actually, the recent years, all my projects were Java E projects. And this year, I'm in the lucky situation to be in some projects with Java E7 and, uh, and Java 8. Um, last year, it was exclusively actually, um, uh, yeah, it was Glassfish uh, Tommy. This year, it is uh, Whitefly, Tommy, and Glassfish, so it is is going getting better and better. So I actually never worked. I was also freelancer. So some uh, some developers suspect me to work for Oracle, or whatever. But I actually never worked for Oracle Sun. I was just always on my own. Um, yeah, there's some references. Um, so I block uh, from time to time, and um, and uh, Twitter handle you probably uh, know already. And uh, three times a year, I organize uh, a workshop week at Munich Airport, so with lots of underdeeds from all over the world. So if you like, come for one week to or for one day to Munich. So there's different workshops on each day, something else. But everything is Java E and, and Web and HTML5 related. OK, two books, uh, OK, so loosely related to this topic. So in both, I mentioned REST, but it's not about RESTful exclusively. Um, so what is REST? How it is defined? And uh, this is actually where the trouble begins. So um, the uh, definition of RESTful Web Services is uh, really clear, right? If you, if you read it, this is like a representation state transfer. REST is a software architectural style consisting of a coordinate set of architectural constraints applied to co components, connectors, and data elements. So actually, um, what what is uh, a little bit interesting here? Uh, you see the hypermedia t uh, term, so it um, it's uh, it is somehow hypermedia related. So um, at least um, you should find some links or identifiers. And RESTful is not about HTTP, but uh, usually it is. Um, I, I have to say, um, in um, all my pragmatic projects, I would say actually in all my projects we use REST with HTTP, of course, and. Um, and um, I would like to widen the definition a little bit because I think you could be restful just using the HTTP uh, methods like get, post, put, delete, uh, and so forth um, without, uh, without, with a really ugly, ugly API. And what I think is more useful to think in, 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 in REST in terms or, or to be more, to provide more usable and uh, domain domain-related API. This is what actually brings the benefit. And there's another term. This is uh, really hard to remember. Hate <laughs> OS. It is called um, hypermedia as the engine of application state. Um, and uh, this is a little bit crazy because uh, in my, from my perspective, it goes too far. It would be like uh, you are providing, providing um, a set of or you are returning a resource to the client with uh, some links and the client is able to parse the links and just using exclusively the information from the from the resource to interact with the server this would be uh, you know the the highest possible rest normalization if you will and um, i actually never saw that in action 
um, uh, that uh, or we never built a, a JAX or S client which uh, automatically parses the links and does something with it. So we always relied on the existing information about some kind of contract. But the idea is nice. And uh, I would say if you would use 20% um, of the ideas in uh, HTOS, it would be already nice. So um, as you can see, this was the last slide. So now everything, I think, uh, should be clear, right? So uh, we actually covered the whole theory behind REST. So we can stop right now. I will just quickly look at the Twitter, whether there are some, oh, there's only, Oh, this is uh, someone asked me about uh, about something Java E related, but not Jacks or S. I will skip that question for a second. Um, yeah, and some 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 someone uh, watches from holiday the Minardi Davide um, Jacks or S, which is actually a nice. So Java is exciting, uh, exciting enough to uh, to be to be watched on vacations. <laughs> okay, now. Um, how to start with JaxRS. So I will just create a very basic project and then I prepared something and I will then um, then go through my uh, examples and show you some newer stuff, what you can do with it. And the examples are based on um, on, on frequently asked questions, uh, of the most frequently asked questions. So um, I will start a very simple project, a Maven project, with the... Um, Maven archetype, which I created. Uh, why I created it? Because I think it is the simplest possible Maven archetype for Java is seven, and this is uh, this is why I did it. And I would call the project um, RestDev. Nice name, RestDev. So um, probably it is obvious to the uh, conference attendees of JEConf, but uh, it is uh, unfortunately not that obvious for my project. So what what uh, uh, what people end up with is um, putting everything to WebXML, which is actually not required. So um, what I created right now is um, a POMXML, a very lean one. And uh, what I created here, property fail on missing WebXML false. What it means, WebXML is actually not needed. The project will build without having a WebXML. So what it actually means to have RESTful web services, you will have to do something. And uh, you will have to create a configuration class and uh, I will go here and say uh, RESTF was our application name in a bound, uh, not boundary. Uh, I'll do it. Yeah, RESTF. And then JAX RS configuration. Come here, hex RESTF JAX RS configuration. Um, simple class. And this simple class, it extends application and application path. And now the first question is, what to write here? So what happens here is um, you will have to create an URI, um, a, a URL, and this URI here um, will be appended to the name RESTF, and the RESTF is the uh, war name, so um, the whole URI is going to be RESTF slash something which was here, so like resources, for instance, and then uh, the resource name. But um, resources is like, or web resources or services or whatever, um, sounds right, but the problem is uh, what it actually, it's actually um, superfluous, right? Because uh, you could, and my resources is just, uh, you could write utility or whatever you like. So the question is, why not to put a version number there? And this is a really interesting uh, uh, discussion because uh, in my eyes, it really depends whether this is best practice or not, um, whether um, you can influence the clients or not. So if you're rolling out the clients together with the backend, you could actually use the version number here because on each change of the version, you could control the clients and roll out new clients. So whatever the client may be, whether this is a web application, or so single page application, JavaFX or whatever. But if in in uh, internet environment, so how it's called web scale environment, it is a little bit harder. So if you change the version here, it will be really hard to notify the client that there is a new version. So I think it would be better in web scale to to to, to put here something generic, which is not um, not version related at all, like uh, resources happen to be in a very thin best practice. 
And, um, and what it means, the URI becomes stable. So whatever happens, it will be no change on the URI. Uh, now the question is what to do with versioning. And uh, what I would say, this is actually a larger discussion, but in a web scale environment, if you're building really a, a, a web service for the, for the internet, not for the intranet, um, I would say your API have to deal with different versions. So you will have to accept older and newer clients at the same time. It, it, um, it causes a little bit trouble with, uh, or no, no trouble, more efforts with testing. But um, I think it is a, it's, a, it's a good idea to do it. So now the application is set up and I just watch very quickly at Twitter. And uh, font bigger, font bigger. Of course we can make font bigger. So as you can see, Java dev oh, this is already 18. Java developers are already a little bit older, so they need a bigger font. I think now we have a huge font. So jeconf, I think now the font is huge, right? And I get a really nice question for Carl Kidden, but this is actually um, nothing to do with JaxRS. I will promise I will answer the question the next AX, uh, QA, or if we have some time here. So now it's configured. So what to do? What to do next? So uh, uh, the next would be to create a class, right? And the class would be the name is develop developers resource. And uh, the developer resource is annotated with path. And the name is always plural. So the question is why? So why not developer? And what I see a lot is like developer service. What I think is uh, conceptually wrong because in my eyes, what you should do is you should address the set of all developers with the resource and then you can query for a single developer or all developers or whatever. But um, I think the first mistake is to, to attempt to use JaxOS for remote procedure call, like uh, like a replacement for, of IOP. And if you would really like to do, to write your own JaxOS RESTful layer to replace remote procedure call, I would model this remote procedure call and um, and like I would use you know the resource called invocations and the ID would be a method name or service name. Then you can model the actual remote procedure call. So, and, um, then I can just return for test string um, developer. And of course, I have no idea who is the most famous developer in uh, Kiev, but I think we can go with Duke, is neutral. Actually, Duchess and Duke. So two developers, which is actually right, because developers is all developers, Duchess and Duke, so get returns to developers. And with a little bit of luck, it could work. So I will try to run the application, which will build, I will use the old Glassfish. It is sufficient um, for a purpose. With Wildfly, it would work as well. And um, Tommy as well. Uh, it's not okay. So I did something before with Wildfly. And just. The next time I will reboot my machine before a conference talk. We'll run it again. And see what happens. So let's see whether there are some. No, Bertha. Hmm. Why I don't see you and your talks at JEConf this year? Ah, this is not me. This is uh, someone asked the Jacek. I think you see me right now. <laughs> okay. So what happens here with Glassfish? Did something work? If not, I would just repair everything with this. Oh, it worked. I was too fast. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> with rock window. So, just do it again, serve as Glassfish and run it. 
sorry for this. I was just too fast. I just killed everything because before white flag shut down and glassfish was started. So let's see what it works this time. Has to. So any questions so far? I think it is obvious. Actually, it is absolutely obvious, but for, for unknown reason, it's not that obvious in the projects. Oh man, I have lots of projects here. This is the problem with Glassfish. But we have here resources and developers, I think. As you can see, it works. Duchess Duke. This, I think you need larger font here as well. So, so now we have a nice web service. What I only have to do, well, it's okay. If it works, it works. So, rest dev. So this was the simplest possible rest web service. And um, so we have JaxRS configuration, developers resource, and nothing else. There is no web XML, nothing, nothing there. So web app, web if you see everything is empty so that's just the simplest possible JaxRS application comprises two classes uh, JaxRS configuration and at, at least one resource so if this would be all developers then you can also address a single developer with um, let's say this is developers and developer and it looks exactly the same. So you can use your template and see even um, first name or first and last shorter. So you can create your own pattern here. First and last pass pattern is first string first and Pass param last last and I can just return to show you that it actually works return first last so um, how it would look like developers chief duchess And I forgot, of course, get. So we have path get. I think we will run it and then see what happens. Remember. So this would return resources developers and uh, path param is chief duchess, and it doesn't work. Developers, does it? This does, and this should. First, last, it's first, last. Path param, it looks good, but it doesn't work. But it has to, it's absolutely right. So, and just rerun it, it has to work. I think it looks right. So I forgot the get. You see, developers, chief, duchess, seems to work. Yeah, perfect. I think there's some interaction on Twitter. So let's see what the news. Nice. Hey, lots of developers there. This is like millions of them. This is like uh, twice as Java 1. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Good quality. So perfect. So good quality of the broadcast, not of the code, I hope. So um, so this is how, um, so what we actually return this text plane, right? It's a little bit boring. So um, what you, of course, then, uh, could also do, and this is the next surprise, this is absolute basics here, you could actually return the developer. And it is sufficient to put root element here and um, 
the accessor type and this is always field in my case because I don't like getters and setters and they become optional here. Uh, private, uh, what was it? Private string name. Name and we have also, let's say, last name and we need a constructor and a constructor. This is the constructor for the sake of Jack B and a constructor with uh, two parameters and this should be sufficient. So what we could do here in developers uh, resource, um, I could return here the actual developer. And of course, um, not here, sorry, this would be not right. So this is the talk about best, pra or best practices, a little practices with JAXRS. So we should do it here, return new developer with name and last. So this would be look this way. Let's try this. And you can see this is XML. So you get it for free. And um, I could go here and say minus H accept application slash JSON. And you get uh, uh, JSON back. JSON back. So um, the JSON bind binding is the almost mandatory in uh, Java E7, but was not mandatory in Java 6, but it worked in most application servers. And Java 7 comes with JSON object. So you can use, uh, so you can use, um, uh, you can uh, you can rely that this what I'm showing you right now would work with Java 7 as well. By the way, there's a small typo. I would just use the first. So now she chief last 42. Works, perfect. Works as usual. Um, now, I hope no questions. This is just basics, right? So, um, and if you would like to change something, you can absolutely do that. You can say here, XML element is, um, name is uh, first name. And, um, and this becomes first name. So, basics. Agreed? So, so a very good question from Christian Lopez. Uh, the REST resources wraps the boundary in a ECB architecture. What it actually means is, um, what, I what I'm skipping today is the following. So this is just, in my eyes, is like um, a protocol adapter. It doesn't actually matter whether we use JAX or S or not. Usually, I would have here the real boundary, and I would call the boundary uh, developer, manager, developer, service, service and manager, stupid names, but something uh, business-like, and uh, I have no idea right now, so we'll call it um, developer service. And the developer service would be a regular uh, boundary, it's an EJB always, why, it's different talk. And this would manage all developers, and I would could inject the developer to the developer's resource. Why? Because usually it's not as easy as, as what I show you right now. You would like to use, for instance, HTTP uh, headers, for instance, and you could use the HTTP headers in your in your code. And the problem then is this is harder to test. You will have to mock out the whole JAXORES HTTP archi uh, architecture and infrastructure in order to to, uh, to 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 write a simple unit test. So I always separate the JAXORES part and the uh, and the facade part, and both comprise the boundary. So if you're in the unlucky situation um, of using SOAP, <laughs> you will also uh, split both. So I wouldn't annotate this with a web service. I would use uh, a dedicated class to implement the SOAP stuff. So now, in Java 7, I hope, no questions, right? No. You could do the following. So you can say, I would like to return a custom JSON object. And by the way, I do it a lot in the uh, recently because um, XML becomes less and less relevant, at least in my projects. So I could say, so I can create um, JSON objects and, you, and, and what I can do then, I can just, um, either I have the JSON array 
or I can just pick whatever I like from the entities and transport back to client. I would, would I only look like to I would like to show you how it actually looks like, and not JSON object. Um, JSON array would be better, but let's start with object to save time. And this is uh, first name. And um, this this was uh, Duchess uh, build. So now it creates the call object, and I can return the object. Okay. So um, how it looks like, if I go here and just use the developers URI, you see that I got a JSON object back. But now I stick with JSON. There is no more XML. So I cannot just use XML. It's just, it's just JSON, nothing else. But um, this is really convenient if you, if you use, for instance, AngularJS frontend or EmberJS or something similar, um, or any JavaScript client, JSON object is the way to go. And by the way, this is not right. You should use JSON array. Remember, I think it's JSON array. Yes. Remember, um, this the developers is represent the set of developers, and here we get a certain developer assuming that this is the actual key, which is actually not right. Usually, usually you would use a technical key, but in our example, is uh, is good. I just wanted to show you a little bit more complicated. By the way, you could use here even uh, regular expressions. So JSON array, similarly, so there's json.create array builder, and I can just um, use this here, and this creates a JSON object, object, and here I can add the object and return the array. Still basic what I show you, but, um, and build. But for unknown reasons, there's lost lots of confusions in projects about this. And you can see it's nice array. So and this is actually a nice, small, nice interface. OK. So we have uh, uh, developer developers about the idea about REST. So to shorten the time a little bit. So what we have here, we have developers. The idea is get, you get all developers back. How developers look like depend on the application. You could return, you could return, for instance, um, uh, XML, JSON, or CLI's Java object. It depends on your client. So developers ID would return a developer with a ID, which is technical, and then you can travel. Okay, I would like to see the programming languages of the developer. Let's say lengths. So and now I would get the list of all programming languages the developer is able to program. And then with Java, you would get the reference to the Java programming language. So the idea is that you're actually um, just looking at the URI. This is actually what I try to do in um, my projects. Just to looking at the URI, I know what is going on. And this is, for me, the um, restful rest in the enterprise or rest in internet. So if you have a cryptic URIs, it's still still restful but less useful. So I will call this a useful rest, right? And why? So um, my idea is the the URIs should, should be self-explaining. So if you show this to, um, uh, to 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 a business or a domain expert, they, they could they, they could they, they could derive just from this without any documentation what is actually going on here, and um, the. Most criticism of, of REST is what happens, you know, get, post, put, delete, there are the, the actions. What happens if I would like just, you know, to um, train all the developers? So it cannot be expressed here with, uh, with train. So how to express, um, express train in JAXRS? And the trick is, usually you don't have to think in verbs. You have to, to think in uh, substantives. So what you should do is, or in resources, instead of modeling train as an action, you should model in the training or workshop as a resource. And then becomes easy again. You can say, hey, developer, Duke, you need some training. And you can post to the resource developer Duke training a resource, which um, a training resource, and so register developer for training. And if you would like to cancel the registration of the training, so you can also equally say uh, registrations for uh, training, right, for JEConf, 
you could say, okay, I would like to, to um, unregister from the conference, which is probably not more possible, but um, how to approach this? Well, if the um, registration is a complex process, we need here, uh, registration or cancellation is a uh, complex process, I say, said it already, you will have to model cancellation, and now you can, with post, create a new cancellation with get, get the status of your cancellation. This is actually a nice trick, and, and uh, no, nice trick, it's not a trick, it's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a rest, um, usable rest. And, um, what, uh, and this is what I see uh, very rarely in projects. Instead, I see something like everything is get, right? And there is a methods uh, or uh, dev, dev action, I think it's action equals uh, register. And this is ugly, and I think even SOAP is better, better than this, right? Okay, so by the way, how to use this? This would be a query parameter, which, uh, which should be optional. With this uh, query parameter, you can, you can refine the query. This is actually the, the idea behind this. Okay, I think we, this is the basic idea of REST, so, um, or, or uh, my understanding, and I try to, 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 to do this. To be able to do, do this, you have to be really savvy in the, in the target domain. And um, uh, a good news here, the domain experts also are thinking in the resources. So I have here a notification from Twitter. Let's see whether it is actually uh, something interesting. Uh-huh. Just jokes. Not joking, asking. You have to ask me questions. Okay. So we have uh, now um, JSON array, which returns all developers, and developer, which is a single developer, right? So how to approach, uh, how to go with, uh, what is the next point? So the next point is how to deal with exceptions. Just imagine this would throw an exception. Let's say throw new runtime exception. Actually not this, but what usually happens, we inject here an, uh, a service, and the service throws on a runtime exception, and how to deal it with uh, here, let's say. No, all developers are at JEConf today. <laughs> no developers. So, this is the exception. If I invoke this, I get a really nice uh, error. And uh, status 500. And the next question is how to deal with exceptions. So one of the most frequently asked questions. And there's a very old, or what it means old, Java 6 days class which is called exception mapper. Uh, runtime mapper, runtime exception mapper. I will just show you how it works. This is really nice. Oh, runtime exception, exception. I thought runtime exception mapper, of course. Exception mapper. Implements exception mapper, and I would like to map the runtime exception. And what I what you should not forget is provide a uh, annotation. And now what I have to do, I have to return a response. Um, status. We can create whatever status we like. We would say, actually, status uh, status uh, server internal server server error is not that bad. Actually, in our case, this uh, um, server error. But what you can also do now, I can. I think I have to import something, right? Yes. So now. What I always do, I create a header with additional information, like uh, reason and you could say reason is get message. And you can uh, usually would create you no know, exception ID and stuff like this, what I would like to skip. So, and this I will create the response and return this. Provider, see whether it already works. You see, X reason, all developers are at JEConf. It worked. So um, I could also say, no, this is actually not an error. It is perfectly fine.
and you can see no 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 strange output is just okay but all developers are at jeconf and this is actually what i do not with t200 which i actually also see a lot what i see a lot they get always 200 response code regardless whether the exception happens or not which is uh, also a little bit a little bit off i would say so i think we have some twitter interactions so let's see what happens oh uh, securing the application um this is a, a, not a good one, a, a good question, but a little bit boring. The nice story is with Jax RS. Jax RS, in fact, is just uh, a servlet which reacts actually to, to uh, reflection. And um, what um, what um, what you can always do, you can create in WebXML um, uh, uh, defined J2E security, and then what you can do. You can say, okay, uh, resources get is uh, can be accessed by anyone, but uh, resources dot post just by a particular user. And by the way, I wrote I wrote a whole article about this, and I'm being J to uh, Java e security, and this was a Java Magazine article. Uh, where is it? It's a Java Java magazine with the E, so it's a free, you can download the PDF. And in this article, I'm doing exactly this. I'm creating a realm and um, and, and, and show you how to deal with JaxRS, but it is really basics. It's, uh, it's like you can you can use the standard J2E security, the old J2E security to secure RESTful web services. Um, okay, I hope I answered the question. So, and this is... And this is a very good uh, one from uh, Oleg, the question. This is, this is really nice. What are the use cases to use SOAP instead of REST? And I would say um, if you have already SOAP in place, for instance, uh, a classic one is if you have old legacy systems like ZOS or AS400 or whatever, it is usually uh, very easy to, uh, to expose your own native stuff like uh, SOAP procedures. Then I would use SOAP for integration purposes. But I would never use, or never, no, yeah, I personally would never use SOAP as a de facto standard in the internet. No one uses SOAP anymore. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. SOAP is, n is no more that popular, I would say. So I express it that way. Okay. Um, uh, resource links. No, I didn't cover resource links so far. So in stateless, um, Sebastian asked, what about if you would like to be uh, stateless? On the server side, um, you can. Um, I mean, the uh, the Java E security is uh, somehow stateless. What you will need, you have to choose. Uh, what do you usually use? Um, how it's called? Um, uh, base authentication, the the easiest one. So you have to to use the username and password. Hash it is base sixty four, and then um, use of course SSL uh, communication between client and the server. But if you are using SSL, this is not no more really stateless because uh, there is a state, there is a handshake between the client and the server, so you have state in place. Perfect. Okay. I think we covered now exception handling. This is a secret weapon, exception mapper. So um, again, um, this was the case usually you wouldn't do this. Instead, you, have, you, you, you are accessing injected resources, sorry, injected services like boundaries. And if you're accessing them here, if you're accessing them here, uh, you will, uh, what I see a lot, try catch, you know, exception catching, a lot of stuff. And uh, instead of this, you can just define common exception mappers in a central place. It works usually well. With EJB, it's a little bit harder because EJB tend to wrap all exceptions. It will have to unwrap the exceptions in the runtime exception mapper or EJB exception mapper. Okay, I think we covered this. And I think this is so far the basics. Then I will try to show you some nicer stuff, so, um, which I prepared because I already suspected the time it will be a little bit um, hard to get everything explained in one hour. So sub-resources, extremely simple, but actually I see really, really rarely in my projects. So we have Jack's RS configuration again, Beans resource, and now there is something different. So if you look at this, it's the following. There is no get, no post, nothing. 
it is just path. If you're doing this, the bin resource is not going to be serialized in XML or JSON, it has to be a resource itself. So if you skip the um, HTTP action here, uh, the return type has to be a resource. So if I click here, you see this is actually a resource. Request code produces and so forth. What I did to, uh, to, to show you something, this is a common problem. This sub resource called bin resource needs an ID and just has an one constructor. But I would like to access the headers here. So you see there are the HTTP headers. And now we have the problem because if we construct the sub resource here on this place, um, the class, um, nothing is going to be injected there. And this is why Java 7 introduced resource context. I think Java 7 it was not um, uh, in place in Java 6. Resource context. And now you can say resource context init resource, bin resource. And now this class becomes managed by JAXRS runtime. So what actually means this HTTP header is going to be visible. So if I run this, I hope, I think I use Whitefly. Yes, now Glassfish is running, so I will use Glassfish. Actually, it doesn't matter, but if I will choose Whitefly this time, I'll get a port conflict again. I will have to kill Java again, which is uh, not nice at Java conference. So, does it work or not? If it takes too long, I will skip to the next one. My machine is a little bit overtaxed with all the streaming and um, everything running on the machine. So, um, did it actually work? Clean and build. It does matter and it will work. So this is actually exactly the same example with, um, so you get actually the point. Why being, why sub resources is extremely crucial in uh, Java projects. Without sub resources, you will end up having here, you know, millions of path and sub paths and this is no kidding I, I i know resources from from real world java e project which are 5000 lines of code so it's just crazy talk so instead um what you can do to to navigate from resource to resource just uh, use sub sub resource again what it is a method returns a resource and is not annotated by get on the container does it delegates to the sub resource i hope it is clear so no question from twitter so it means for you crystal clear Hopefully, is this new? So it has to be new because this is really rarely used in projects. Instead, they're using you know all combination of path and subpath. The next classic one, or not classic. This is actually a little bit harder because not harder. It is um, Java EE seven. It was not available in Java EE six. Let's uh, imagine the following: I have uh, a method post beans, which returns the two beans in, as a list. And what I would like to do is, um, I would like, oh, this is, this is, doesn't matter here. I would like to um, introduce a container request filter. And what the container request filter is able to do is something like an interceptor in Java 6 or in CDI or EJB. Um, and the annotation pre-matching is really interesting. So uh, this is going to be executed before the container matches or chooses the um, action on the on the server. So um, what I can do, I can say whatever the client executed, set the method to post. Um, what's nice with it is, for instance, you could uh, the client can send post request and you can set it to put, which should be, for instance. So. Um, there, there was lots of discussion on the internet, you know, what, how to deal with proxy servers sometimes or old browsers, sometimes they don't they get delete, put or whatever. So you could use container request filter to override the methods after the fact. So um, although the method was put, you can override it to, to or even get, you can always override it to post. So you have the complete, uh, the, the, the complete control over uh, lots of things. So you can swap the stream, um, uh, even request or inject security context and lots lots of stuff. So if this is actually a little bit AOP. So this was pre-matching with container request filter. Container request filter. And um, there is something like an interceptor, something similar. And um, it's called writer and reader interceptor. They're actually uh, both. There is... Um, Write and reader. 
So there is outbound and inbound. So there is a reader. And the reader is comes from the request comes from clients as on the server, and the writer is the other direction. So what you can do usually it wraps the resource mapping. So you get here the access to um to the to the entity and to the stream. It's also new in Java, Java E7. In Java E6, there was only message body reader and message body writer. And with message body reader and writer, you could very easily use your own protocol. So you could use your own, um, um, you can introduce serialization here. So this is um, also new stuff, uh, reader interceptor and, um, and um, yeah, to intercept the traffic. So filters, it's the same example with filters. So it, um, I have just uh, get and post exactly the same example from before. And I would like to, um, to lock all the requests and what I can of course do without pre-matching, I have just here, I, I can intercept the whole traffic and lock everything out. Or I, could, I was um, asked recently, I would have to you know to have access to HTTP headers for authentication tokens. You can do it absolutely in container request filter. So this is a very simple example of the pre-matching. Pre-matching was like, you know, changing get to post with recent container request filter. And this is very basic example. So you have to the access to the uh, to the um, get headers, get header string to the to the headers, for instance, and you can use uh, security authentication information to something with it. So um, even more interesting is dynamic feature. So what dynamic feature actually is, is um, how it's called dynamic feature. And what it does is um, you can configure, st configure stuff. So in this case, what I did is um, depending on something, you could use, you know, um, I don't know, environment, uh, time, system properties, whatever. And you can decide whether to register, for instance, a request locker, which happens to be container request filter. So the difference being is if you would like to lock everything, you could put provider annotation on it. We had it already and provider means it, it gets applied to everything. But with this, with the dynamic feature, you can, you can decide on something, whether you would like to, uh, to deploy uh, message border readers, writers, whatever you like, dynamically, which is really nice. For instance, uh, in debugging case, you can intercept the whole traffic and in production, or if everything um, is okay, you can just um, skip it. Of course, you will have to redeploy the application or restart the server. Oh, I got some questions, sorry. Ah, is there any, uh, any way to make uh, a request asynchronous in JAXRS? Yeah, of course, and this is actually very, very easy. So I can show it right now. So how to make it asynchronous? Uh, void. I will skip this and say suspend it. Async response response. And then I will just delete the exception and say response dot resume object. And the nice story is what I could do as well. I can say response dot uh, set timeout. And I would say one day is a little bit hard. <laughs> but response dot uh, set timeout handler, and you can register timeout handler here. And what you can do here, you can say, okay, in case, uh, in case timeout occurred, I will take the async response and write an appropriate HTTP uh, code back. So, um, of course, JAXRS is not only, JAXRS2 is not only uh, asynchronous from the client side, uh, from the server side, but it's also absolutely asynchronous from the, um, from the client side. So the client is also asynchronous. So this is um, how it would look like an asynchronous invocation. What asynchronous actually means is that the method is, um, is executed immediately and you don't have to wait until something happens. This is actually, uh, so, sorry. It, um, the method is completed uh, um, immediately and uh, without blocking a threat and you could pass the async response to someone who, who an asynchronous EGB or whatever, who, um, which, uh, which uh, fills uh, the response in asynchronous way. By the way, I, um, 
I recorded a little screencast about this. So if you go to YouTube and you will see, uh, watch the screencast with complete little future to see it in action completely uh, asynchronously. So on that note, so what, uh, what I wanted to mention but uh, didn't is usually I don't use this. I always return a response. So uh, it would look like response.status. And in this case, it's okay, of course. I think it's entity, yes, entity, and I will just return the developer here. Build. New developer build, looks good. So this is a little bit boring. A little bit more exciting it would be if we had a post method which creates a developer. I think we are a little bit off time. So uh, the question to the organizers, how much time we have, I will hack a little bit. Um, and uh, if you are no more interested, you can just leave the room or something. <laughs> so the question is, um, if you have any questions, ask and uh, the uh, organizer can block me at any time. So. Uh, return response. What's wrong with ah? This is uh, I would say save developer, and I could pass the developer here. Developer, 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 developer. And now, if the developer is created, I could return response dot. And now a little bit interested, created with a URI dot build. So, and this will return 201, not 200, 201 with a location header, which is really nice because on the client side, you will see, okay, now the developer is created and uh, is available under this URI and uh, the whole uh, header creation happens automatically behind the scenes here. So, um, how to do this? Um, I think I could do something like this. Um, context. I think URI info, right, yes, info. And there was something with builder, get absolute path builder, add now path, and I could say uh, ID and system current millions. Usually we'll use uh, ID from the database. Build, I think this is, looks good, URI, and you would return the URI here. And this is wrong. So let's see whether it actually works. So developer, what developer, we only need the de developer data to do this. So um, can we do this developers? Let's try this. Okay. So I would use uh, I would use uh, the Duke chief, and this is my developer. And now I could say curl minus X post minus the data, and the URI is, I think, this one. Let's see whether it works. What is the problem? Oh, I forgot something. Minus H uh, content type is application slash, oh, slash JSON. Wow, it worked. So do it again. What do you see right now? Developer is created. And what you get back is location, as you can see developers with the ID. This is not, actually, we could create uh, something really nice. So we, we could say, uh, not this, rather than make it really restful and return something like Chief Duke. And of course, you know, getting it from the actual request. Let's do it again. So I get this, and now I could go here and say 
curl. So as you can see, you get this XML representation of the developer. This is what I meant. So, um, so there are lots of HTTP codes and how to deal with it. I would say what I do in my projects, I go to HTTP status code RFC, RFC, yeah, perfect. And uh, just look at the codes and I would uh, um, use a code which really fits the best here. And um, this is the basic idea. So um, instead of inventing something, just uh, look what's already there. At the same note, if I forgot how post or put or whatever operates, just go here and say HTTP post RFC. And the specification is surprisingly lean. If you go here and search for post, for instance, uh, this is everything. So this is the whole specification about post. Look at this and then you can write better interfaces. So um, I think our session is over. We could talk for multiple hours. Do you have any questions? Any questions about REST web services and stuff? All other questions I was asked, which were not about REST, I will answer them in the next uh, AirHex QA. It is, I think, June the 2nd. So I will just pick the questions put to my blog and I will answer them as well. But right now I would like to hear whether uh, you have any questions about JAXRS, JAXRS 2.0, Java 7, in context of JAXRS. No questions? Then I would say thank you and sorry that I'm not there in uh, at a JConf. Would like to come, but uh, crazy time. I have lots of deadlines to meet and uh, just the travel would kill me this time. And I think it worked really well. You are a little bit more quiet than usual. Usually I get uh, so many questions via Twitter that I actually cannot handle them. So. Um, Thank you for watching and see you one of upcoming conferences, hopefully JConf uh, next year. Um, Java 1, I will, I will be there, um, or Airhacks in Munich Airport. So um, yeah, it's behind me. So um, thank you for watching and bye.